Here's five tips to getting started to live van life as a digital nomad. First of all, welcome if you're new to us. My name is Justin and I'm Deanna. And in August of 2022, we decided to pack up all of our stuff, move out of our condo, move into this. Full time. This is our house now. So we're sharing so you don't make the same mistakes or you're a little bit more prepared than we were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we were not prepared. <laughs> okay, so tip number one is you need to start packing and purging your stuff a couple months in advance. 100%. Yeah, not just because you're getting ready to move out of your place, but it will also help you learn to live with less. So having a more minimalist lifestyle. You're gonna have a lot less space for a lot of your things. So getting comfortable, being able to just live with less, I know it seems logical, but it's much different than you anticipate. And I'm gonna say he made fun of me for doing it, but I was like, we're not gonna have a lot of stuff. I don't remember that part of our <laughs> life. I made fun of her because when we move, regardless of where we're going, it's like four months before we leave and she starts packing stuff up that we need during the time. I'm like, you can't pack up our computers. We work from home. Whatever. We got pen and paper. <laughs> That's all we need. Yeah. I don't think pigeon mail works the same way as uh, Gmail. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Tip number two is don't use towels or pots and pans. Okay. It's not exactly that. It's really start to find things that have a dual purpose or things that take up less space that serve multiple functions. It's just much more efficient for you. You'll actually end up finding things that you really like that you probably will take back into your home life when you stop living nomadically. Yes. Right? I know. Yeah. So a couple of things that we found is, first of all, bath towels. Bath towels take up a lot of space and they take a very long time to dry. And if you're living, especially in a van, you don't have time to let things dry all the time because you've only got one or two towels because again, less things, right? Exactly. So we found these amazing towels on Amazon and we're big fans. They dry very quickly and they absorb a lot of water. And the honest favorite thing, they're cheap. Yes. They're inexpensive and they've been incredible for us. Mm -hmm. We also found this, is it a it's a pasta strainer? What do you call it? Col a colander. Colander. Yeah. <laughs> a strainer. A, a strainer. Yeah. Right. That folds down into one little compact size versus your typical strainer. And then one other thing is you don't want pots and pans. You want pots and pans, but you don't want to be individual pot and pans. You want to bring ones like this that we found that actually work really well because it's They're kind of stackable and the handles are removable. So you've got a bunch of pots mm -hmm. in the footprint of one normal pot. Yeah. And they work great. And they're amazing. Yeah, really like we'll it. leave links in the description so that you guys can find all of those. Okay, so tip number three is plan, plan, and more planning. Plan out at least the first two months of your travels because inevitably things are gonna happen. Not everything is gonna work out. Decision fatigue is, is a real. Thing. It is real. And expect the unexpected because things are not always gonna work out the way you anticipate. So having at least a strategy and a plan in place will kind of help minimize that decision fatigue and the frustration, especially if you're traveling with your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. I know it's romantic to start thinking, you know what, we're just going to take off. We're going to live every day as every day comes. Where do you want to wake up tomorrow kind of approach? And that That's is the approach did. that we took. As romantic as that sounds, the first few months is going to be learning how to live that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you've traveled before. We've done a lot of traveling. That's irrelevant because it's a different ball game when all of a sudden, you give up your home base and now you are on the road while you're going through this like decision fatigue and learning all that stuff, taking out the equation of amplified decision fatigue because you don't know where you're going to be would have been really nice. It's like one less thing to stress you out. Yeah, the more a, you can plan in advance, the less decisions you have to make on the fly. Okay. Tip number four is if possible, start your new life plan for that first two months during the off season of all of the national parks and all of the tourist attractions and wherever it is that you're going to spend your first two months, because here's kind of what happens. You're excited, right? You're moving out of your place. You're starting this whole digital nomad life. And the probability is high that you're going to want to start by seeing either tourist style places that you have not seen before, or that you have seen before and you really liked. Now, again, that decision fatigue is a thing. So the last thing you want to do is also struggle with trying to figure out where you're going to stay or not be able to get the campsite that you want because everything's packed. It's just one more level of stress that's added to your life, dealing with the crowds of people that are going to be frequenting the places that you want to be. One of the joys I think of being able to live nomadically is being able to see the places that you want to see when they're not packed with people. Yes. Right on the off season. Okay. And tip number five is if you are going to be living in a van, an RV to save extra money or put extra money aside 
in anticipation that you're going to be staying at hotels or Airbnbs because maybe you need to get work done on your vehicle or you just need a break. Exactly. <laughs> Mainly it's because you're going to need work on your vehicle and we need to anticipate that. If you're purchasing a new RV or a new van, the probability is extremely high that in that first couple of months, there are going to be things that happen with that vehicle and it's going to be in the shop getting worked on. If most places you go to and buy an RV, they'll call it a shakeout period where the first road trip or couple road trips is going to be just a matter of getting all the things that are going to happen, shooken out, and then they're going to have to be fixed. So during those times, if you are living in that lifestyle like we are, you don't have another place to go. So you're going to be spending time in Airbnbs or hotels while that vehicle is being worked on. Bonus tip number six is make sure that you acquaint your pets with the vehicle a lot before you decide to take off. So here's a big mistake that we made. We have a dog named Kevin. This is Kevin. Kevin is a very sweet boy. He's a sensitive boy. He's sensitive. But with that said, one thing that he has always loved is car rides. He cannot get in her car fast enough if he thinks we're going somewhere. Yeah. So it was a total shock to us when he hated the van after we brought it home. And, and then when we did get him in the van, it would be panting and he was just anxious. And so we had to really plan to slow down and slowly introduce him to the van and get him excited about the van. Now, as soon as I get this door open, he can't get in here fast enough. But there was a lot of time just getting him comfortable with being inside of something that we never, ever would, never. would have thought that that would be his concern. Like, yeah. And I would even say too, like get them used to it, like make it a really positive experience in short trips, but then lengthen the trips because we, we actually did like a 10 minute trip and he seemed fine. Um, so it's like, okay, then maybe you do a 20 minute trip and maybe a 30 minute trip and you go on different terrain, I think would be really important too, because if it's like, smooth road that's great but then the bumps come and then all of a sudden there's yeah. anxiety and, and things like that so good tip that's good job yeah that yeah. that that's all yeah those that's are things really that i done. wish i would have known so 100 we're passing our learn learn from us yes <laughs> so i'm curious if you have any questions about moving into becoming a digital nomad or living van life or anything like that comment below let us know whatever questions you have because yeah we might have answers likely there are answers that have been <laughs> determined by us making the same mistake so there you go yeah. <laughs> well so hanging out if you got any value you know what the subscribe button is do all the things youtube stuff you know what it is all right so we will see you next week take care now bye